Uh, sure, hey, welcome. Uh, today we've got a, a, a special treat. We've got um, Adam on the line. Adam's made a cool little project um, uh, using one of these ESP32s uh, called Spluny. And Spluny um, connects to uh, an actual LND node um, using the, um, uh, the macaroons. So I'm really interested in seeing how he's done that and, and how, how he's made the project and, and what it hopes for, for the future. But Adam, do you want to sort of introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. All right, so it's actually four years ago, I've, um, I've built something similar. And it happens to be my first blockchain project. It's what got me into making things on uh, using Bitcoin. So I had, a, I had a background in electrical engineering. So I was tinkering with Arduinos, uh, microcontrollers. Um, and then I found out about Bitcoin and then all this, uh, this is interesting. And I wanted to combine both of those and see what I can do with it. So what I've built in 2015 was um, using the ESP8266. I've had it, uh, I've, uh, I've had it connect to a third-party blockchain explorer API and continuously query a certain address. And I've set that address as, um, as, as one of my address, just one of my receiving on-chain address. And if I send, like, say, a thousand bits to it, then it will light up. So I have, I have, a, I have a video of it somewhere in, in my Twitter. That, that's um, cool. Man. That's cute. I saw that on your, I saw that on your. Yeah, yeah. Get hot, get hot. Go ticker, go ticker. Is it a block? Uh, so I, it was uh, called block thing. So this Pluny thing is a, uh, it's like a rebrand, so, so to say. Yeah. So, that's, that's cool, man. So you're experimenting with the ESP eight two six six um uh a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's uh all all the way back in twenty fifteen, and it works. Um. So you know you, you know you've gotten paid. And then I was thinking of putting it in some sort of like a vending machine situation, uh, like a use case. But then um, you run into this uh, unconfirmed transaction because it's, it's listening to unconfirmed transactions, which is a problem because uh, it's, it's trivial to, uh, to double spend. So even though, I mean, even though you're Maybe for a for a can of soda, it may be acceptable, but um, I think uh, even at that point, I know it's not it's not very it doesn't really make sense because let's go once once people figure out how to double spend, spend this thing, is they're gonna keep doing it. Right? So that's really interesting. Yeah. So it was it was the 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 unconfirmed transactions which actually kind of stopped. So you're obviously building something. Man, I'm starting to innovate, and then when you came up against that that issue, you thought, "Well, there's not much point. There's, no, there's not much sort of real life use case where this is going to be um, uh, useful uh, currently." But now we've got the um, microtransactions uh, with Lightning Network. Now all of a sudden, your your old project makes sense again. I uh, when I when I was building when I was developing that first one, I spent a lot of uh transaction fees too because i was i was developing on mainnet so i wasn't even using testnet <laughs> so so i was making so sorry about that so i was polluting the bitcoin blockchain with all these uh, transactions so uh, but uh, yeah i spent a lot of fees on on a uh, on bitcoin mainnet well, but, that's, no that's so interesting because i i flipped through my my eclair wallet and i've got like thousands of lightning transactions to myself like trivial amounts and i can imagine if you were probably doing the same but on main that that must have sucked yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah there was a lot of fees that uh probably worth a lot much but when i check uh when i checked that account after a few years i forgot uh, after a few years I, I forgot about it and then i checked back it was it was worth quite a bit like the the, the amount of bitcoins that was sent to it and also the fees that were paid. So, oh, yeah, and, and so it was. Yeah, it was working with a third-party blockchain explorer, um, and it wasn't doing. Uh, it wasn't HTTPS. So, which is which is a problem because then uh, you can also spoof the the API server, and then make it think like it's being paid when it's not. So. 
No, ESP8266 has a way to do HTTPS, but it's slower. I was going to say because I, I really struggled with the the um, the 8266. So I couldn't get it to do HTTPS. It was um it was the, the memory restrictive. It, I, is it one of one of the libraries works? Does it? There's a yeah. There's a there's a library for it. Um, but it takes like two seconds to do HTTPS calls. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. not really. But, um, so that was yeah. So that was like back then, uh, and that's what got me into um, working on as an IoT blockchain consultant for a while. So, which is, it's been quite, um, um, it's quite rewarding. But now I've, I've gotten some free time and uh, decided to come back to, um, to doing things on Bitcoin. So this has been on my radar for a while. In 2016, I started learning about Lightning Network. And there was the uh, uh, roast beef, uh, Rose Beef started working on LND, so I was keeping track of, of all that. Um, and I think like even all the way back then I, I knew okay, this is this is what I need. This is what I need to make uh, my device work as a proper Bitcoin vending machine. Well that's cool, man. That's cool. That's mean that, that proper that really is like proper sort of application layer type stuff, isn't it? You know? Um, uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's cool as well that you, you've, you've been tracking this for such a long time. I mean, I, I've only just really been fiddling around with this hardware uh, for the past sort of year. Um, so, uh, but, 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 you know, you've obviously, so when you, when you did um, uh, as a consultant for IoT uh, blockchain uh, stuff, um, was, that, was that involving other currencies as well? Uh, so the first gig that I landed was, um, um, I built something on Raspberry Pi, but where this is a prototype that I've built for a startup that is supposed to send um, cargo environment data to the Ethereum to a private Ethereum blockchain. So I've gotten some experience working with Ethereum smart contracts and uh, how to send data using the using the Ethereum JavaScript library and things like that. So that so. That was uh, yeah, that was interesting. Did it work? Uh, okay. so, well, it was a prototype, um, and um, it didn't. Um, not sure what's the status of that project. Uh, so I've got, I, I, I only worked on it for a few months. So once I once I'm done with it, building the prototype, um, uh, uh, that's all. That's all there is. Uh, that's 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 what I do. I I I I'm a prototyper, more so than a developer. So I build I build like sort of like first ten percent or fifty percent of the thing. Um, see, okay, this makes sense. This can this can work. But then, okay, you need you need people to come and uh, finish it all the way. So that's where mo like actually most of the work is actually like the last ten percent of. The of the work takes ninety percent of the time, things like that. Yeah, that's that's, the same yeah. Thing, yeah. that's really nice. Really, really interesting. Um, and then um, now, uh, now I'm, uh, I'm still in, uh, I'm still working in some something along with supply chain, um, supply chain management kind of things. So that's my day job. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, now, uh, so. I mean, from as far as I, I can see, these little devices are kind of the 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 the, the lowest powered, um, cheapest, most accessible, um, uh, most sort of you know powerful uh, enough uh, devices for for developing IoT type things um, on on Bitcoin and on Lightning. Um, would, would would we because I kind of you know when you used to see those those Andreas uh, talks a few years ago and you talk about devices exchanging value between each other. Um, and he's, he's very much kind of a futurist, isn't he, Andreas? He's sort of thinking a few steps into the future, and then everything's got to kind of take a while to, to catch up. I kind of feel like now we've hit that point where we're going to see a huge amount of innovation on, on tiny little devices like this. How, how, how do you feel about that? Exactly. That's, uh, that's, what, that's what got me focused on, these, on this particular platform, because it's basically the cheapest hardware that can have an IP address. And ASP32 makes um, um, it's a dual core chip. It's more powerful than the 8266. And 
it's very comfortable call, uh, doing HTTPS calls. So, which makes it very practical. Um, and yeah, uh, having uh, uh, the, the cost aspect is interesting because it opens up a whole, whole new world of possibilities, I think. And combined with the low cost of lightning network transactions, like you're, you're basically paying like one, like less than one satoshis, even. I mean, right now routing fees is like it's like most of most people have set a default routing fee. I mean, it could probably even go lower if, if people started being really competitive on providing routing services on the, on the network. It would be um, sure be much uh, much much lower because um, because it's very trivial to set up, and once people started putting more and more bitcoins to it. Uh, and more and more people started start using it. So we have a very cheap payment system, uh, a payments layer, and we have a very cheap, a very affordable hardware that can interact with that, with that layer. And, th and this is, um, I think this is going to be very interesting. And also, um, I kind of, I kind of want to touch a bit on on the on the on the aspect of using Bitcoin for payments at this juncture in time. Because if you if you if you read Bitcoin maximalist literature, they are talking about the they are talking about the evolution of money from collectible to store of value. And then medium of exchange and then unit of account, right? And then, uh, and right now, Bitcoin is is barely left the collectible stage. It's it's entering into the store of value phase. So, does it make sense to build um, a payments infrastructure at this point in time? Uh, that's that's something that also want to want to want to want to touch a bit. Yeah, so, no, I mean, I think it's uh, it's um, it's kind of a period of prototyping, isn't it? Where um, yeah. before people start using it, it kind of makes kind of makes sense to get everything ready. Like my my one of my driving uh, factors is I, I always kind of imagine if there is this horrendous economic world collapse and and people do start start turning to something like Bitcoin, then we need to have a lot of things in place ready for it to work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then similarly with the uh you're right i mean it's not it's not a store of value i mean it's, it's, it's going down in value so much it's, it's not it's not good for payments at the moment it's more an investment thing or whatever um but um being able to to build out the technology and get it ready for when for when it is uh applicable when it is useful that kind of makes make sense to me exactly so so the point i'm getting at is that uh i if there's a few merchants here in Malaysia that's already accepting Bitcoin. And sometimes uh, sometimes when I go to a restaurant and I see Bitcoin accepted here, oh, that's interesting, but oh, I don't want to spend my Bitcoins, <laughs> uh, especially in the bear market. So, uh, but this particular project is interesting because it unlocks um, entirely, I think, an untapped segment of is real world micropayments. Um, and another topic that is interesting that we can talk about is do you want to uh, do you do you want to create a world where you have to pay for everything? And this device can make that happen. So whereas before this we can only theorize about it. But I think if you can um, yeah, I have one. I have one right here. It's connecting to Wi-Fi. I just put it in. Yeah, I see what you mean. So, so, so rather yeah. than rather than us physically like chucking a few pence in a in a toll to go down a road, we would have um, we would have devices doing it for us, like in our car or whatever. And we wouldn't really. It just kind of chip away at our balance. We wouldn't really feel it as a, as a, as something we'd need to physically do. 
Right. Yeah. So um, it's just a matter of of getting these in the hands of people, which is which is a big motivation for me to uh, to open source the code. So uh, even though I really my main motivation right now is to build a, a Elman or Elman or M M dispenser for my office. Because I've seen quite a few people on, on Twitter building building that. So I think, oh, that's cool. I, I, I want to build one for myself. But, yeah. Yeah, nice. I, I mean, I'm, I'm working on, on one of those at the moment. For me, I mean, because it's, we're talking like low powered. I think one of the, the coolest things about the SP32 is like the ultra low power modes where you can get it to go to sleep. Oh, yeah. Exactly, uh, yeah. Because if you're if you're spending if you're spending like tiny little amounts of money on something, you don't want to then spend a load of money on on batteries or on on electricity. You want it just to be sat idle doing nothing, and then when someone wants to engage with it, it only uses a tiny little bit of electricity, and then it goes back to sleep again. You're not spending money on that because it's um, it would make it it wouldn't make it cost efficient. Yeah, I'm work I'm working on kind of an updated version of mine at the moment, um, uh, and it, it it it's been on for like a week. And the way I've done it is I've got so I've got an e-paper display, um, and it's an ESP32, which is just output into it. But when I when I press the the little button, it then wakes up, um, uh, and then it, it processes, and then it displays the displays the QR. But in saying that, it's not working. It's typical, isn't it? I think because I, I picked it up. The wires have got something's happened to the wires in the back. It's all it's all messy in the back there. Um, uh, oh, sorry, one second. I think it's like a person, or like an infrared infrared. instead of someone, someone shows uh, if someone shows up in front of the machine, then it'll it'll know to turn turn itself on, right? Yeah, that'd be cool. What to have like to just have like a little sensor which just kind of yeah. notices the 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 that shadow. That'd be really good. Yeah, some sort of proximity sensor thing. Yeah, you could get a you could get a the, the PIR sensor for. Uh, it's two dollars. The, the proper one. What's it? What's, like what's, uh, what's that? What's that? What's a PIR PIR sensor? Is it like the one on the sun and outside outside your homes? Oh wait, that you've gone. You've gone. You've the gone, lights turn You got a bit laggy. Say that again. You're a bit laggy. Sorry. Hello. Oh no. We've got issues. So yeah, the you can get a, a the a motion sent the motion detecting like the one CC and the and the security cameras into like that. Yeah, if you uh, if you search on if you search on AliExpress, um, yeah, I found a few for like a few dollars. So nice. the, it's like a small one that's that's made for Arduinos. That's flipping yeah. awesome! I'm totally gonna get a whole bunch of those. So I hadn't even thought of that I had like the physical button on there, but you know, it's a bit annoying because you got when you press it, you have like a, a few second delay where it connects to the Wi-Fi and then it go and makes the request and then it has to make the, the the QR code. So to have so if you had a motion sensor, it would um it would it would it would kind of do all that as it was you know as the person's actually getting his their phone out ready to go. So they would sense them, it would turn on. It's, yeah, yeah. So that's a much better way of doing it. I like all right. it. Let's see. Uh... Uh, what you can do is uh, is to cache the uh, the buffer for the QR code so that you don't have to build it again. And that's that that probably save like a, at least a uh, one second. Oh, I'll stick that in there. Is that the program memory thing? Chuck it in there. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could keep it in the in the SPI file system. Oh, and that's another thing. That's, yeah, that's another thing that's great with this uh, with these devices. Yeah, that's a uh, it's very generous with the with the flash memory this uh, you get most comes with like four megabytes so that's uh that's that's quite a bit yeah yeah i mean hardware wise there's some um uh i wonder if it's worth me actually getting um uh oh no i'll, t I'll talk about it when i when i when i in one of my tutorials or something i'll talk about the actual all the peripherals and all the mm -hmm. uh the, the different types of memory and the um ulp and uh um because you you have the you know the the graphic with all the different parts which make up the USP P32, and you've got the um, the cryptographic section and so on, haven't you? Um, 
Is it, is it worth us getting getting that up? I think I've got a picture of it somewhere. It's probably worth us getting it up, isn't it? Just so we can, for anyone who isn't uh, sure on it, um, is that it? Let me have a look. No. Um, for anyone who, who who doesn't quite understand what we're talking about, it will kind of help them, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. If I can if I can get a picture of it, I did have a picture of it, I'm sure. I had a picture like saved. Where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. Cool. Um, if I, what's the best way of doing this now? If I screen share application, there we are. So you should be able to see this now in a second. Can you see that? Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the that's the um, DSP thirty two, isn't it? Uh, um, so you, you've got uh, this is the, the flash men, men, uh, uh, embedded flash here, isn't it? You've got uh, ROM SRAM, you've got the ultra low power coprocessor um uh which you know that's the, that's the bit which stays awake isn't it when when it's asleep that's the bit which kind of you can store stuff in yeah so are you See, saying... yeah that's that's the bit that you want to use the 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 low power processor to to uh to run the motion sensor oh i see so you would run that for ah so that'd be running the yeah that makes sense that's running the sensor and then when it picks up, when it, it gets a high signal, then it just fires up the whole thing. Or you could even just just keep the whole thing asleep for and for once every five, and then just have it turn on once every five seconds or so. And I think it's also powerful enough to be its own lightning node. Yeah, what with neutrino or some sort of like prune thing. Uh, we have neutrino and uh, and a C lightning. I think you could easily make it work with the SP32. We probably need more RAM. And is it can be quite bandwidth intensive, probably, but maybe at first, I'm not sure. But it's, yeah. uh, it's possible, yeah. Sorry, everybody, the other camera just killed out, died out for a second, but um, I'm charging, so hopefully, I'll come back on in a minute. Uh, so, Adam, do you think you could do like a, a little demo of the Splooney and then like go into detail of how it kind of works? Sure. All right. Uh, I think I can screen share. I can turn on my screen share. I hope it doesn't crash again. Uh, sure. Right. Did you see my browser? Yeah, man. I got it. Right. So this is a uh, this is a Lightning Joe, which is a Chrome extension. It's a uh, the, this one on Firefox too, but the Firefox one doesn't work because uh, so William had a problem getting. Uh, I forgot what it is, but I was uh, I was testing out uh, earlier versions of uh, uh, of Lightning Joe. But yeah, so this is my Lightning. This is my LND. Um, this is my Lightning wallet. It connects remotely to uh, to my full Lightning network node, uh, LND and Bitcoin D, um, which is not on my laptop. It is in my apartment, which is half an hour away from here but i was able to i was able to connect it uh, to connect my uh, my lightning wallet or uh, the, the browser extension at least to to my lnd and that's the first prerequisite for for getting the spoonie to work cuz you need um, by default lnd doesn't work this way it uh, you can only access the HTTP REST interface uh, from localhost. So you need to edit your uh, your config file to allow external connections to that uh, to the REST gateway, and then port forward uh, port 8080 you know, on your router so that you can you can access it from outside. So I'll show you some latest the latest. Uh, invoices that, that have been created. So these ones 
aren't generated by the wallet. These are actually requested by the EST32. But it shows up here, which is, which is kind of convenient. So it says here, um, invoice number 206. And if I turn my camera back on, You can see here it's invoice 206. Well, that's cool, man. And reverse. Right. So what happens is that this works exactly the same as the browser extension. So both uh, both the, uh, both Lightning Joe and this device has has the macroons that enable it to talk to my to my to the same LND that I have. And let's see if we can I'm gonna I'm gonna open eclair on my phone. Yeah. How big's how big's your your display on that? Because um is it the um is is it the same is it the same as that? It's the same. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly it. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I already have one. Yeah, I got a collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a collection of uh, ESP thirty two devices or oh, boards. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, I need to get more. I, mean, I actually only have two of these, and I'm I'm waiting for more to come. Yeah, and I'm, order and I'm getting... the express, they take a, while, a little while, then don't they? But they're so cheap. Yeah, the ones with the ones with the screen is uh, even with the screen it's only like eight dollars, which is amazing. Yeah, no, it's impressive. I've I've also bought um you can buy the screen separately, and then uh that but they're like two dollars or something to buy separately. Um, the little they're, yeah, they're about the same price. So so the ones that I got are just the it's just the development board with no screen, but I also. I also got this 1.8 inch TFT displays, which is uh, which lets me display the QR code bigger. So, so this oh, one, is that is that like that sort of thing? You reckon? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I think that's a that's a 1.44. Oh, oh, that's a bigger OLED module. Yeah, it's a bigger OLED. Yeah, uh, because I got that to, to, to display the is it QR. One, is it one two eight by one two eight? Pardon? Is it is it one twenty eight by one twenty eight? I think it's um, I think it's two hundred by two hundred. So whatever that is. Uh, oh no, one point five. Yeah, one point five. But that's yeah, like. Uh, is there was there a resolution on that? Uh, it's high, man. It's the same as these these little ones. Um, but it's it's a it's a wave share, so it's like a little bit more expensive. But you can buy like you know um no brand types on on um, uh, AliExpress. Um. Which I'm starting to like more and more because I use that on my my new e-paper display thing, and that's just like a a, a, a no brand, and um, the wave share I think is like twenty dollars, but on uh, AliExpress these are like ten dollars. So you know. Yeah, the the e-paper ones are interesting. It's quite a bit more expensive, but it's also more, uh, it's 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 lower power consumption. And so yeah. if you need to do something battery powered, then it's probably a better choice. Uh, the problem with with the with the e paper is that if it if if the if the device goes offline or it crashes, then the QR code stays there. And then if a customer comes and 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 sees it and tries to pay it, you wouldn't get any indication that. Uh, or the uh, or the machine that is plugged into the device wouldn't wouldn't do anything because it's it's offline. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, no, I hadn't thought. I mean, that's that's kind of that's almost like the, the selling yeah. point is the yeah. fact that um, it can it can display something when the the uh, ESP thirty two is not powered up. But actually, in the same respect, that is there's also an issue that you could have some sort of redundancy measure though. So um, you could have some uh, just thinking, you know. You could have um, uh, so if it, if it powered, if there was no power coming from the ESP thirty two, 
it. No, that wouldn't work either. Yeah, you could have you could build something so it could it could clear the screen if it were to lose power from the SP32. But then it you wouldn't know if it was losing power from the SP32, would it? No, yeah, no, that is an issue. That's an important point. But with the with that logic uh, to remove to clear the display if it goes offline. But then it'll just show oh, uh, uh, connection loss or something. Right. Right. Yeah. So my my eclair is. Um, oh, is it doing the? Uh, it's doing the the network thing. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I actually, I, actually, I didn't ha actually, I didn't even have to wait. It usually works right off the bat. But yeah. So I'm gonna scan the QR code on the device. Cool, man. And again, I'm very pleased that the that it can actually pull off the QR code, but on some phones, it's more it's a little bit more difficult to scan it, especially if it's an older, uh, lower resolution camera. So there's the invoice, and I'm gonna hit pay. That's right. That's so Excellent. good. That's why it's called lightning. Look at that. Boom. Um, right now, yeah. Right now, I only have the OLED. I kind of wanna. I wanna add uh, a new pixel RGB LED to it just to make it more striking, and then add it to my Almond dispenser machine. Oh, so so you get some sort of visual feedback when it's been paid. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. So you you mentioned that. Um, the LED screen is a little bit too small for some phones, like the yeah. yeah. Which is why I'm getting the TFT displays instead, just to see how I could, I could get it to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, because I had the same. I just because I got a crappy phone, and I have the same issue with them. Is it? It can't quite. It just can't keep up with the, the contrast or the brightness. But you did say. I mean, you can turn the contrast down, don't, can't you? Um, but I've been. Yeah. I've been... yeah what, what I did is that I minimize like. I turn down the contrast all the way down. Uh, if it's too bright, then it just uh, uh, it it bleeds out the QR code, and then can your phone can't parse it. Oh, I see. Nice, man. Yeah. No, I've been playing with you. You know the old Nokia um, screen. Uh, let's check this out. So I've been playing with that. So this is like the old. Do you remember the old Nokia fifty ten screens, which are really cheap. They're like two dollars, three dollars, or something. And then, um, so if I switch it on, uh, it should come on now. Give it a second. There we are. So, uh, and these are incredibly low resolution, but um, if I put like an amount in there, ooh, um, and then I hit this, nice. Pro processing, and then, but it's just big enough. It's like 64 um, uh, pixels. Uh, so it's just big enough to be able to display the QR code, uh, and, and that's 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 they're 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 pretty low powered, and they've got a backlight as well. Because the other thing I found was with the e paper displays, um, was uh, uh, when I went to the Hackers Congress in Germany, um, uh, it was dark, and like you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't scan the QR because it was too dark, you know. Um, uh, so having something with a bit of a backlight to it is 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 is, is preferable. But I haven't tried the TFT ones yet. I want to try the TFTs. Yeah, the e paper wouldn't work if it's dark. Yeah, you you have to turn on your flash. Yeah, no, it's a pain in the ass. It's it's the the UI because there was the guy there with the um, the guy who did the scooter. Um, uh, he oh, was. I, I seen I seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool project, man. It worked. It worked really well. But it was it, he had to have a flashlight. Um, uh, uh, and then when he's doing his when he's demoing it to people, it's kind of like you, you just want to go like the ideal thing is going up something and going boom, isn't it? And then getting something, um, uh, uh, getting something that's sort of an instant and instant in, instant feedback, um, rather than having to wait and, and fiddle around with flashlights and stuff. So, um, but I really like that. So, could you talk us through um, the 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 GitHub and and how you how you developed it? How I developed it? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, well, so actually, it took me like a like a 
like two weekends. Uh, well, most of the time is um, so. What I do is that I, uh, I I'm I'm a, I'm a prototyper, and then I just I just browse around for libraries that seem like it could work, and then I try them out one by one. Um, so I've had the CSP to do for a while, but I, I I wasn't doing anything with it. Uh, it came it came with the with the OLED, and then I figured out uh, I wanna. I wonder if I could uh, if I could display a Lightning Network invoice using the screen. So that and that was the hardest hardest part because uh, I I found a few libraries that could display the QR code, but it it had a character limit like slightly less than the length of the of a of a typical Lightning Network invoice, which is very uh, was very very frustrating. Uh, and then I found a few other libraries where uh, that had instead instead what it does is that it just turns the the invoice string into uh, into a bitmap, and then I have to use uh, I have to use the the OLED library to render the bitmap like line by line. So, uh, so that uh, so this one works nicely, uh, which is which is uh, which I'm very pleased. Um, and then uh, most of the other stuff is just things that I've done before, like um, like years ago. So I'm already familiar with that. Uh, what do you use? Because you don't use the Arduino ID, you use platform IO, do you? I use platform IO, but it's very similar to the Arduino ID. Well, it's also a nicer development experience because I, um, you have the uh, code highlighting and then, yeah, syntax highlighting and things like that. And then everything is uh, everything's built in into the like the platform IO uh, plugin for uh, for the for Visual Studio Code. You can you can start a new project and then you can add libraries like from within VS Code. I don't even have to leave. Uh, I don't have to. I, I don't have to leave the uh, the text editor. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Uh... Um, can you are you able to are you able to just use like the, the Arduino libraries? You can just use those in platform IO as you would. Yes. So so in uh, so in platform IO, uh, most of the libraries that that uh, that works with Arduino, if you if you search for it in the in the in the library tab in platform IO, it should show up. Well, that's cool, man. Uh, if it doesn't show up, you could you could add you could add library. Uh, you just download the the GitHub repo and then put it in your uh, in your lib folder, and it'll just work. And then you just have to include it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's brilliant. Um, also, kind of like, so it's kind of like it's kind of like npm JS, but for hardware, which uh, depending on who who you talk to is uh, is either good or bad, in terms of security. But uh, it's very convenient. For a prototyper, yeah, no, I mean, no, that's that's yeah, no, uh, npm uh, is incredibly easy to kind of yeah. scroll through libraries, isn't it, and get different libraries. There's a library for everything, multiple libraries. Um, so no, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out platform IO because um, I just use the Arduino ID because it's just I can't be bothered learning. Really brilliant that the, the can you show the machine again? That the the one that you built with the keypad, but that looks like a proper point of sale terminal. Oh, what the the sorry, the sweet machine thing. Yeah, the one with the keypad and the, and oh, the battery. Keypad. Yeah, this thing, yeah, it's ace. Um, that's it. There's right. an ESP32 yeah. under there. I'll take it off here. Um, there's, if I take this off here, uh, there is an ESP32 in there, see? Oh, nice. Um, and then he soldered in. Uh, these keypads are a pain in the ass because they're not like the other keypads I've got, the little sticky on ones. They've got this really simple matrix, whereas these are, I don't know, they're all square. Um, I got a bunch of those and. Uh, uh, and the plastic ones also, like the, yeah. the plastic yeah. dome ones. I like the the feedback you get from this more, you know. Um, and then I got the the big battery as well. Um, and then because that's got you can charge. It's the idea being that you have a charge point and you can just charge it. Um, so there's a there's a battery there, and then you can just charge it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's just a regular. Is it a life I think it's just a. You know how, how long it how long it can last that a battery like that? 
Oh, what this is? Well, this is a three. This is three thousand seven hundred milliamp uh, hours. So that's that's a big battery right there. Um, it's what they use them for the uh, uh, e-cigarette things, don't they? Um, yeah. uh, but this little module is really cool. It's just uh, nicely laid out, and this is powered powered. So you just, so you won't be able, you won't take out the battery. This will all be enclosed, and mm -hmm. then it will just it will just run out of battery after like weeks and weeks and weeks, and then at that point you plug it in and charge it. You know, as you would like a phone or something. Um, just be like those like mobile uh, credit card terminals that you see. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Same, yeah, it's the same. That was the idea I wanted to make because I just thought about the the way in which it's like, yeah, you can just use your phone. You know, if, if the easiest way for someone to accept Bitcoin and Lightning is to use a phone, but you don't see many merchants doing that. Like most merchants have a, a built device specifically for um, receiving card payments. Mm -hmm. um, Man doesn't do much to the device. You just they input the amount and then they click and then you you make the card payment, don't you? Um, so it made sense to kind of make like a really simple version of that. So that's that's what I'm working on. I haven't shown this to the world yet. I probably I'll probably cut this out of the video actually, um, and then uh, I want to do like a separate video on that um, at some point. I'm I'm trying to take this to advancing Bitcoin. Like I, in fact, the reason I was a little bit late is because I was printing out the top bit for this, but it doesn't it doesn't fit anyway. So there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on there and then um and in fact it's back to front too which is which is good <laughs> but yeah that that was going to go on there um uh and then uh I'll put, put a sticker or something here to make it look nice so it's uh yeah I'm, 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 I'm trying i'm trying my hardest but i mean i'm not a developer so i'm you know i'm you know i'm not same here <laughs> we're, we're prototypers oh is that the what is that what we call ourselves we call ourselves prototypers i like that yeah, yeah. But um, actually, in my in my GitHub, like this, it's a, it's a working example. But I kind of want to turn it into more of a library style. So you just have to include spluny.h, and then you have an empty sketch, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Oh, so you would include your light. So you would include. So hopefully, yeah. you know, so you'll, to, you'll include that's, Spluny, that's not put your macro information in, and then it will just do it. Yeah. And then you can you can mix and match peripherals like like say, let's say that that keypad or different kind of this different kinds of di displays, even things like Bluetooth and uh, and NFC, which solves the trying to scan a QR code in the dark problem. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely not. Yeah, tap and tap the NFC of the phone. You have to turn on the N your phone's NFC and just tap it, and then you'll get the invoice. Yeah, nice. Um, like, I mean, you're restricted because not all, or not all phones have NFC. This is this is kind of the problem, isn't it? You got to try and cater to everybody. But it'd be, it'd be cool to have it in there as a uh, as an option, you know. Yeah. Uh, just like the cards, just like card payment. Uh, uh, whether or not you could make a card, um, and then have it, uh, um, have your have the have the have the the NFC chip on the card. Uh, send uh, some some other script like. A nod saying yes, it's okay to send a payment from here to here. Um, uh, oh, that, maybe uh, a custom macaroon. Do you like think you you can... store, store custom macaroons in your in, in a NFC cards, which lets the merchant spend from your LND. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. Well, that is actually a possibility, is it? Yeah. So so we don't have that yet. So LND needs. Um, I think Rose Beef is planning a macaroon bakery that lets you customize the macaroons in a more, uh, in a much more in-depth way. So that you can customize everything. Like, how much can you spend out of this, uh, out of this macaroon? At what time can you use it? At things like that. It's very, it's very flexible. Uh, that's not. That's another interesting part of, of macaroons and 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 the application layer. How we, how we can uh, have fine grain access control over the over the wallet. So so as, as far as I understand, a macaroons they're quite an old concept, aren't they? They the the paper for for those came out a, a while ago, um, uh, and it's uh, it wasn't it's it's just being picked up by by lightning because it's useful for lightning, but um, uh, it wasn't specifically built for lightning. It's it's something. Um, it's just uh, like, it was, yeah. It's a it's a Google thing. But they use it for the uh, for the cloud services, like the G drive, uh, the Google Drive, and the 
and the Google Office Suite. So that lets you do things like share share your files to people, and then who can view it, who can re, uh, who can modify it. Yeah. Uh, so they use that. Yeah, they use micro rooms. So like a big part of the developing on these things for for communicating with your node, I suppose, is going to be how to configure the macaroons. Learning, learning macaroons is probably an important part. Probably something we should actually do a tutorial on at some point. Yeah, I don't know much about it myself, but yeah, it's very it's very interesting. And and L and D when you uh, when you start it up, it uh, it comes with three different macaroons, which is a admin, invoice, and a read only. Yeah. So. So and then just just use the ones that you think are uh, appropriate. Just yeah, no, that's, that's that's how it is nowadays. Yeah. When 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 we have the macaroon bakery, you can you can customize it further. You can build you can build your own custom macaroons. That's cool, man. When is that? Do you know when that's happening? Mm, not sure. I guess it's in the roadmap. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, there we are. Well, that's, that was cool, man. I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot. Thank you um uh yeah i'm definitely going to do that I'll, I'll probably like try and make it up myself using Splooney, and then um i'll like uh if, if once once i get it working i'll uh i'll probably do a little tutorial on it if you don't mind yeah sure uh not at all yeah uh yeah, i really appreciate someone trying it out um i'm doing I'm doing the same thing myself i'll try i'll try to get some of my friends here to to build one themselves uh there's also the there's a there's a bunch of guys in chiang mai so the uh, L, uh, the lmcm guys so they've also expressed interest in in getting a few boards and and building it themselves and they wanted to use it for uh, for to have like let's say you're uh, you you have a restaurant and then you can have lightning terminals on each table and then with a with a keypad, the customers can enter the, the the menu item, and then you just get an invoice. You pay it, and then the servers would then know okay which table is paid, and then just just get your food. That's so cool. Yeah. That's such a cool idea. That should be so easy to do, wouldn't it? As well, because you just the each ASP and it knows which table it's at, and then it just sends the order for that table, and then some of the people they just deliver the the food. Yeah. Wow. Are you going to make a working example of that? Is that something you have? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, so why I'm, I'm waiting for for all the new hardware that I'm, that I'm ordered. Still, still in delivery. Oh man! Oh, I can't wait. Oh, good luck to you. That sounds ace. And where did you come up with the name then? Splooney as well. It's an interesting name. ESP and LN. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I like it. Nice, simple, good. All right, cool, man. We can come up with a logo for it. Right. Are you coming up with a logo? Are you? Yeah, I need to come up with a logo, like a nice cartoony logo for it, also, just to match the name. It's a good name. It's a really good name. It's a really like memorable name. You know, when I when I saw it, when I saw saw you named it Spoon, I was like Spoon, Spoon, Spoon. But then it's just sort of stuck. Then you know. Um. So. Um, yeah, so. that's what I'm getting for. Yes. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks, Adam. That was really good. I really enjoyed that chat um uh so thank you, thank you everybody um uh, for watching uh make sure you uh you know um uh, get one of these little esp 32s with the screen this one's a, a wemos one um they're pretty they're cheap to order as we, as we as we said as we mentioned and then give give Spoony a go and then start experimenting and commun to communicate to your your lnd node um uh, and that was great and yeah, yeah thanks again adam for, for for showing us how that works it's a pleasure Brilliant. cheers Bye.